Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. So okay. good to have you with us here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage here. We are live at AWS reInvent 2019. We've been here since Tuesday, wrapping up a little bit later on this afternoon. It's a pleasure to welcome Jeff Frick in for the first time. Well, I haven't seen you Great in a to while. See you, John. Yeah, Thanks Jeff for Frick. coming out. John Wall's here and with uh, Neha Rumta, who is the principal applied scientist for the Automated Reasoning Group at AWS. Neha, good to see you as well. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's, let's kind of put this in perspective for people at home. You got, the, you got the AI world and the ML world all happening and automated reasoning, applying in all those contexts. So kind of give us an idea about what that mesh looks like, what is it all about, and then we'll jump into what you're up to at AWS. Right, so automated reasoning is a subfield of AI. So the way you can think about it is AI is a dip discipline of computer science that allows you to have rules, to teach a computer system or an algorithm rules about how to think intelligently. So a, a lot of the tasks that traditionally humans did, we, uh, we transfer it to a computer doing it. And ML and automated reasonings are subfields of AI. I would call them sister fields, but on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So in machine learning, you would have the computer system learn the rules by observing data, lots of data. And it's very good for certain things, like voice recognition. There is no definitive set of rules that says how, how can I recognize a voice. While automated reasoning, on the other hand, doesn't look at data, but it, for the things that we know that exist, there, are, there exists a definitive set of rules, we encode them, and the, and the system and the algorithms can reason about it, uh, and access control is a great example of that. There is no unknowns. We know what the shape of access control looks like, what its definitions are, there is, uh, and we encode those rules in a computer system and algorithm, and allow, that allows us to ask you know, many questions uh, and be able to have different applications and security, compliance, availability. Sorry, you talk about asking questions in the context of security and access. Who's asking who what questions? Is it the system asking the person trying to get in? Is it the person trying to get in, making sure they're getting into the right system? Uh, who, who's actually asking those types of questions and what are those questions? So, some questions are very general. Uh, for example, um, in most cases you do not want, um, you, you want to make sure that your S3 bucket is not public. Uh, only if you're hosting web assets or web pages are potentially the only cases where you would want a bucket with uh, wall read access. So this is a question that's a global security best practice. So we would say, we would, we would ask the question in AWS, is, is this the case that the bucket is public? But as an as a organization, you may have specific questions about who in my organization can access something. And that can vary based on organization, based on the security best practices that you have, based on the governance rules. So some questions I would say are best practices, while others can be specific to organizations and enterprises and companies. Now that's really important, because when we do hear about breaches, and we hear about breaches all the time, it seems like usually if Amazon is involved, it was some misconfiguration. Some switch got left in the wrong position. So this is the type of application that you guys can now search for in advance to make sure that, whether it's industry best practices or are you sure you want to leave this, this knob open, you guys can get ahead of the curve on that. Absolutely, and um, at AWS we want the customers to have options and have flexibility to, to do those things, but, we all, and, but at the same time we want to provide them different means where they can check, you know, check, double check, triple check, that their uh, conf uh, configurations are as they intended. And we've, we've partnered, like, uh, we've partnered with S3, so you see the public, not public badge in the S3 console. Last year we also partnered with them on the block public access, where uh, it allows uh, it account administrators to turn on that nobody can ever access uh, their bucket. And so we've, we've been providing uh, a lot of features to our customers to allow for them to detect and prevent misconfiguration of their resources. Yeah, how, how much more complicated is it now or complex because you have you know, so much more resource, you've got a lot of data, 
Companies want it to be accessible to a lot of different people, or people within the company want access to it. Um, but just in, in terms of fundamentals, what does that do to your game? I mean, in terms of what you're trying to provide, the controls you're trying to provide, when there's a lot more of it and a lot more people who want to get at it, basically. Right. And this is where I, is one of the powerful things of automated reasoning, where, um, as I said, it's a sister field, but in a way, the opposite end of machine learning. It doesn't need data or logs or who has accessed things in the past, but it just looks at your configurations, your policies, and because of the rules we've encoded, it can very quickly tell you who outside your account has access. And we launched a feature this Monday called I Am Access Analyzer that uh, with one click you can enable it in your account. It will scan all the resource policies in your account and tell you, hey, Bob here from marketing can read this bucket. Is that intentional? And that's not something we can say because that's a business use case. So you put that on the customer, right? To yeah, let them make that determination exactly, for themselves. Exactly, but we provide that visibility. Yep. And, and the goal is for uh, the customer to say, yeah, that's intended, he needs access. So I'm going to archive this, I'm going to say this is intended. While if it's not, it, uh, they can go to the, uh, the respective service console and fix the access. Um, and essentially, it empowers the customers to make decisions about what access is intentional versus not. It, it is it, does it just like fire off notifications if there's something that seems kind of out of band within, within your system that says this doesn't seem right? Or you know, how is that actually executed? Because I don't think most people understand how complex access control can be between different roles, different projects, different resources. It gets to be a pretty nasty, hairy mess. So, I mean, we have, uh, we have many ways that uh, customers um, can get notified. We've provided um, uh, integrations in the S3 console, so a lot of, they don't need to go somewhere else. If people are in the S3 console, they can have this information uh, right there. Uh, there's a little tab in, in the S3 console that says Access Analyzer for S3. Security Hub is where a lot of the security uh, compliance people look for a holistic view of their security and compliance posture, look at findings from other security services as well as partner solutions. And we also provide uh, integrations with CloudWatch events so people can just subscribe. Hey, this bucket suddenly allowed John access. I don't know, John Be careful with that. With that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shut that thing down. And How, but what about, uh, just in terms of ease of use, I mean, that's always, I, I think it's, as more capabilities come to the market and, and you give me more choice as a customer, sometimes I'm going to think, oh, you know, wait a minute, this seems like it's going to be over my head, or, or a lot more complex, or a lot more intricate than I thought. Can you keep it simple? I mean, I don't, I don't mean access for dummies, but, but can you keep it relatively, uh, that ease of use in a pretty comfortable level for me? Absolutely, and that's our goal. So, uh, traditionally, when you talk about automated reasoning, there has been this, oh, it's high touch, or you need to be an expert user to do it. And what's, um, with this offering here, all that com like it's all one click, and you don't have to be a security expert or even know how access control works, or be like a mathematician or a logician. It's just simple declarative statements. It'll say John from account one two three can read your resource. And that's, and that, that's it. It's that simple. Yep. So it's it's essentially for customers of all verticals. Uh, you, you don't need to be a large cus uh, cus uh, customer with a huge team uh, to be able to use it. Anybody, anybody right. can just turn it on and use it. And that's been one of the things that we've pushed really hard on, is to have that ease of use. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm curious philosophically, is, is this a different type of, of AI that can be applied when you have use cases that just don't have the big data set? Because that's what we hear all the time about traditional AI, is you know, to identify the, the chihuahua dog from the blueberry muffin, you need a lot of pictures. But this is something where you don't need a lot of data, so you see lots of different applications beyond you know, this initial launch to apply this type of reasoning? Absolutely, So, and there's a lot of systems, a lot of configurations, a lot of, uh, even code, architectures, there's many, many systems I, uh, that, where we can apply these technologies for us to have. And that, I, I think you hit a very key point. We don't need the data. We are in a way data agnostics because the rules that we derive are the rules that we've made up. I mean, 
we know the rules because that's how AWS is constructed. So we leverage that to create these automated reasoning technologies and uh, we're starting with access control but there's a lot, lot of other places that we want to start using this and applying it. So how is this making our, our operations more secure then? I mean, and ultimately, because if, if you're giving me a chance to better identify who's coming in, who's coming out, uh, obviously there, there's some protection there. Right. But, but, I mean, look at that for us, or at least try to paint that picture for us a little bit, and, and why does this give us better protections, better securities in, in terms of, uh, of protecting from invasion? So, it, it, in the cloud, like cloud, security is our number one priority. Uh, is we call it job zero uh, at AWS. And as you talked about, where it's flexible, it's growing. Your business is growing. Y you want to know what's happening, uh, and you want you want to be you want to have the uh, you want to be empowered to make the right choices and right decisions. And this provides you that visibility. You don't have to dig through you know the different configurations to see what's happening. Uh, like for your compliance auditor comes on board, it's like, are you sure that this meets these least privileged practices? Right. And now you don't have to go digging. You can just say, oh, here's a report generated from this tool that has analyzed all the possible accesses. Uh, so it, it allows you to scale better. Uh, as a business, you can focus more on your business value, core propositions, rather than having to say, oh, how do I check the different configurations sure. meet my security? Uh, requirements, and it's it's not passing judgment. It's not saying this is good or bad because what may be good or bad for a business can be different. It depends on yeah, their the perspective, context, exactly. Right? And, and what so, they want. so I think that's the that's the key part here. Where um, I mean, there are some cases which we which we would call security best practices, but there's a whole like tale of use cases that are very very specific to to your business, and I think by empowering you to make that choice and decision of what is intentional, what is not, and do it in a way that's easy, one click. Uh, you don't have to think hard about it. Right. I think change is the game for security. Well, I would say my only uh, uh, piece of advice is don't give John access to anything. <laughs> that, that would be. <laughs> and with that, yeah. with, with Access Analyzer, you can, you know, you can <laughs> check that John Shut does down. That. Jeff, <laughs> you, you now have control. Shut him down. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah. We appreciate the time and, and walking us through. Good luck with the product launch, too. I'm sure things are uh, rolling well for you. Neha, okay. thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Back with more, we continue our coverage here. We are live in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2019.